incredibly cold. That's this is the problem. I don't know if my set's still on, hopefully it is. <sighs> I just hope I don't have this FPS glitch. Are so cold. My game is really quiet. My tires are ice. Can't be us. I can't be a fucking ass. This game is so shit. Why do I waste my whole week playing this? My tides are minus 200 degrees! What is this? My tides are two minus 200 degrees. 200. What the hell is this? Are you alright? <laughs> Engine off. Engine off. Uh, that's enough. That's it for me. I, I can't do it anymore, man. Okay. Yo, JD here, Tyrell Limus. And as you can see, that'll be awesome. We are on F1 2021 20, here today, and. You can see by the title of this video, this is, I wouldn't say the word negative, but it's going to be a dramatic race, I can assure you of that. So, there'll be a lot of raw footage here of the race itself, and yeah, you can see by that little intro there, you've had quite a history at Baku, which is a track that surprisingly i've actually really enjoyed driving it's a track in terms of pace it's always been a pretty good track for me but things haven't always worked out the way that i uh, would have liked them and here we are for brs round three of the championship and so far it hasn't particularly gone to plan first race at usa we actually did get a podium so that was a fairly good result and then Monza, we had a great chance of fighting for the win, but an error under the virtual safety car pretty much cost that opportunity. And now here, was feeling quite good coming into the race. And this is actually my fastest qualifying lap I did. And I really focus on race pace here because tyre temperatures and tyre wear is quite a significant factor around here. And as always, I tend to practice with uh, TTM Rusty, who is, I think, the fastest driver on Xbox right now. And qualifying, he always beats me quite comfortably. But in the race, I felt I actually had the upper hand, very similar to Monza as well, where I felt the race pace was definitely much, much better for me. And I felt if I drove my best, then we'd have a great chance of winning those races. So coming to here, I was quietly confident and this lap wasn't particularly bad it was quite a conservative safe lap i did do another lap after this but i didn't improve by that much but the good thing is as well is that i wanted to make sure i completed my lap before the timer ended because you actually get less tire wear if you drive back to the pits by yourself which is quite an important factor around this circuit and you can see here that only puts us p7 on the grid with Rusty doing a 0.2 four tenths clear. His pace in qualifying is just absolutely nuts. And in terms of the championship, you will be seeing those standings at the end of the video, but we are a fair way behind already um, since we didn't 
get any points at Monza. But 1p7 here, and as I said, I was quietly confident with the pace, even starting from here. So we've got three lights, four lights, five lights. And as they go out now, initially our launch isn't good, but the second phase of it was a pretty good pickup as we got at the outside of Andrea. Uh, I think that's Kirby now, who's on my inside. So we're going to try to go around the outside here. Fair racing so far. A little bit of contact between the Red Bull and BRS Josh. And it looks like the Red Bull might have suffered a little bit of wing damage. So we're going to go to the outside here. Not wasn't really planned to go around the outside in here, but just to try and avoid the carnage on the inside and leaving some room on the outside just in case. It's very easy to get caught underneath someone's front wing. And we've made it one position into uh, P6, so, so far so good. And you will hear on the radio in a few corners time that the red ball in front of me does have wig damage as well. So as we go through the castle section, I think you'll be able to really tell uh, going through here. Uh, as we're going to get a pretty good exit coming off of this corner. Uh, so I think we'll now go ask Jeff what the current status is of the car up ahead and if I got any wing damage myself. So coming through into here, it's getting quite a lot of time uh, through this section and yeah, just my race pace and practice was very, very strong around here and as I said, practicing with Rusty normally gives me a good benchmark and apart from the USA, Monza in here, I felt I definitely had a bit of an upper hand because the setup I'm running here is very, very kind to its tyres and the tyre wear. And you also might notice that I'm running a 51 brake bias, which also protects the tyres and stops the rears from locking a bit too easy. But you can see we've got managed to get past the Red Bull or the uh, MV33 Red Bull quite comfortably um, as he pitted because he did have wing damage. So up into P5, fastest lap is a 41.9 do a 42.0 and now we are behind BRS Josh who I think is a new driver to this league there's quite a lot of reserves for this league so they do get given opportunities on a weekly basis but you can see here I'm not gonna fight it too hard I'm gonna try and save the ERS as much as possible so right now I'm just thinking about tire saving mode that is all I'm thinking about because then towards the end of the stint I should be very very fast so Coming onto the straight now, we have Andrea behind us, three temps, and I'm going to make my move now. So we do have quite a lot of ERS available. I'm going to use a little bit here just to avoid myself getting overtaken from the Alfa Romeo behind as well. And looks like BRS Joss is using quite a bit of his to maybe try and slot in between us. As now we have gone up into fourth place in this race with. Rai UK up ahead of us, AMS Triss, 3.4 seconds ahead uh, with Rusty leading the race. So if you look at this top left hand side of the screen, you can see the gap is 3.4 seconds. Pay attention to how quickly that actually comes down. And this is simply because we've looked after our tyres and the setup we're running is much more suited for the race than qualifying. And the goal here now is, as I overtook Josh, is to then try and get in the DRS zone of the Mercedes up ahead by the end of the lap. So, again, just trying to be as efficient as we possibly can because ERS is quite a precious thing around here. It's pretty hard to save the ERS. So, I really got to make this lap count as much as possible. And you can see that the time we are gaining on the cars up ahead, we've already pulled out a second from the car behind as well and right now we are definitely the fastest car on track and just driving with such confidence recently i've been driving very well with my driving just uh, there's been a few races where things just have not uh, come together either most of the time through my fault as well but now we've got to make sure we're within the drs zone and uh, trying to stay out the drs zone of the car behind as well so Let's go give it a little boost on the exit here and we managed to get in the DRS zone. And you can see on this lap alone, we've gained almost about eight tenths or more 
on AMS Stress, the leaders. And there's that right UK has his red light flashing. So he is under or very close to 10% of the ERS. And exit this corner, he goes quite defensive, but we're not going to really uh, fight it too hard here. I wasn't really too bothered about overtaking him here because we are still gaining on the leaders. And you can see 3.4 last lap, now it's 1.9. So gained quite a lot of time in this lap and pulling away from the cars behind as well. And it looks like Rai UK has also got the pace. So that's why I decided not to fight him here because I was quite happy for us to cruise up to the back of these cars. And as discussed, looks like Rusty is now in second AMS Tris. Looks like the leaders are struggling a little bit on the race pace because tight temperatures and mainly the tire wear. As you can see, we're already on 40% on that five is pretty high around this circuit so you can see we've got a pretty quick car in a straight line as well as why uk actually pits which then releases us up into p3 in this race and the detection point for turn three is just here so we tried to do it but we won't go be close enough so let's see if we can get within the drs zone and i think we're going to be able to do that quite easily as you can see our tire or front brake bias has now moved up to 52 percent because i wanted to uh, give myself a little bit more severity and protect the tires even more so sometimes when your tires go off you get a lot more rear locking and oversteer and to counter that a good method is actually to go up in the brake bias itself and you can see it's definitely working in this first stint we've come from seventh up to third these two were the top two on the grid as well and we've done pretty much almost a perfect first in so far and we still have about 40 percent of the ers available so right now i was feeling incredibly confident for this race and the strategy was to try and go as long as i could in this race because the mediums are not a particularly quick tire and I felt just really confident in my pace itself. So we're just going to make sure we're staying within the DRS zone of these uh, top two cars. And you can see we've gone down to about 29% ERS. Our car's quite quick in a straight line as well. We were running nine, six wings with this, but the rest of the set was very stable. And the top two still stay out because I think they know that the pace I have on these tyres at the moment. If I had fresher tyres as well towards the end of the race, then we will be in a very, very good position. And we've done exactly what we needed to do. We've gotten to bid the DRS zone of the two leaders. But as we skip towards the end of lap seven, you can see we're actually starting to close in a bit more on AMS Triss. And you can see the gap behind to Andre. Someone who I race with in open lobbies is a very fast driver. Has extended to over four seconds as well. So definitely showing the speed we have at the moment. And it looks like AMS Triss is struggling a little bit on the pace here. Don't know if his red light is flashing. His red light is actually, in fact, flashing. So we've definitely got well over 10% more ERSM. He decides to pit. And Rusty stays out because he does still have that little bit of a gap to me. So I think he was just trying to get as fresh tyres as he possibly could. And it's now coming through into here. If you watch the uh, brake bias once again, we're actually going to change this to 52 to 53. Just to give it that even more stability. And before the performance patches, we were quite often running at 53, 54, 55. But since the performance patch kind of went back to the old ways... Which was quite unfortunate because it's quite good when you had a mixture of uh, different brake biases you could run. But now I've started to use it a lot more when my tyres go off. And you see the gap is 1.3 seconds. So closing quite a bit on this first sector already. But we've got to try and get within the DRS zone again if we can do that. As you can see the gap is almost the same. But coming through this left hander, since we've just got so much more stability... We gained about two to three tenths just through that corner alone. And now the gap is under one second. And no, to be closing up on Rusty like this. Again, someone who I say is 
a war speed, the fastest driver on Xbox right now. I was feeling very, very confident for this race itself. So we're going to use the ERS here. Right, Looks like his left. red light is also going to be flashing. You can see the car almost wanted to snap away there. But it looks like his red light is going to be flashing as well. And what happens here? Do we continue for another lap? No, we don't. So we do box. I did feel this was probably the right time to do it. So he has managed to extend it. But I think he had to really slow down his pace in order to get there, though. So now we're going to pit for mediums, which should be fairly okay at the end of the race. But lap, a lap fresh for mediums than other cars. Especially on circuits where the tire de degradation is quite high. It's going to be okay, you only have to uh, pretty powerful. Now. You can see Amos Trist has come out 2.2 seconds ahead. And I think Rai UK, who pitted on the end of lap 5 or something like that. He is now out into the lead. But coming towards the end of the race. In the initial stages of the stint, there won't be so much of a difference. But when it comes into the last 10 laps of the race. Last 10 to 5 laps. That's where there will be a significant difference and right here now i know rusty on raw speed has got the more raw speed but if i can just stay with him so i'm really desperately trying to stay with him now but i know once the tires start going off ever so slightly that's when my setup will come back swinging onto my side much much more so i need to try and hang on if i can hang on here and then be right behind him when his tires go off then we should be in a pretty good position of this race. But you can see, as the tyres are fresh and there's no degradation at the moment, he's able to flex his raw pace here. And I just really wanted to try and get within the DRS zone as much as possible because we are going to be catching quite a bit of traffic as well. And I want to make sure that I am following him through the pack. But currently, the detection point is on the exit of this corner. And I don't think... We are going to be close now. So I'm just taking a complete risk here. I'm using all of my ERS. And I think we're actually going to be running out of it completely coming down this straight. So we just missed out on it here. As you can see, as we skip on to the next lap, Rusty has now caught up to the back of Ryu K. So you can see Ryu K's tyres are actually going off already. And the pit is only two or three laps uh, before everyone else. So coming towards the end of the race it will be even bigger than that but it looks like rustic has got through yannick who is a reserve driver in this league hasn't pitted yet um, at all and his teammate who is a full-time driver is also on the same strategy as well but no if you're a reserve driver you're not really typically going to be helping out your teammates so much um, because you haven't really been racing together in the championship but we're coming up behind him now, and yeah, you will see at the end of, or well, the beginning of the next lap, I was kind of just taking my time here, because I was quite happy to uh, get the arrest uh, from him, but it looks like it's going really slowly, and no issues with tire wear for now. Keep taking it's coming through here. Why is he going so slow, man? What's he doing? And you're about to hear so what Jeff is about to say here now. The gap is less than a second. They're on old mediums. Their tyres are 10 laps old. Oh, he car ahead has damaged the front yeah. wing, but it seems fairly minor. The time last lap was a So, yeah, the car in front hasn't pitted yet. So he's effectively a pit stop down so at this time. stage. And he's got wing damage as well. So, yeah. Oh, I wanted to stay behind him here because hell, otherwise he would just get the DRS back past me. That's so sick. although we've lost a bit of time, I felt like he would just DRS back past me again. So we're just going to stay behind him here to get the DRS. And now he's using the battery. If you look at this, he's using all of his battery. His red light's about to flash. And we're about to go into his turn one here now. And... What are you doing, you fucking... There's so many fucking dickheads in this league, man. You're not even fucking peered yet. He's using his DRS again. There's so many knobbits who just want to ruin people's races. That's all they can. <sighs> and... Yeah, we eventually get past him here now. And... If we just take a look at this again... This is the point where he's using all of his ERS and 
He's effectively a pit stop behind here, and he's got a broken front wing, minor damage, and coming into this corner, let's take a look at this. What are you doing? Yeah, he's actually gone off the track himself, so he hasn't left really? any room. Fucking, we were the car ahead, and I know a lot of people are going to say that it's his corner, You're but... not even fucking peered yet. Yeah, for me, I won't really say too much on it, but in my opinion, I just felt I mean, bit, so just there was just no the racing races. etiquette or respect there at all. And uh, I don't mind people fighting for positions, even if they're a pit stop behind, but I think the most important thing is that you do it fairly. Yeah, and lost like six seconds. Yeah, because of that, we've lost almost, yeah, five seconds or more, four, four bit seconds and... Yeah, I'll let you comment what you think of that, but you can hear by my words there, I wasn't particularly happy. And no, I've had a few days to look at it as well, and I, I still agree with it. I think it was just completely unnecessary, and yeah, I, I just don't really understand it. You're just damaging your own race, and there's nothing to gain from that. And no, I know myself when I stream, or the pleasure of streaming to a lot of people as well and no believe me when i do open lobbies i know people like to make my life quite difficult but yeah when you're racing in the league as well it should be the standards should be a bit higher and yeah i wasn't particularly impressed with that and yeah i just don't think there was any racing etiquette there and that's me just being completely honest on that and you, know, you can disagree but i just thought that was incredibly unfair um, and just not needed at all but we get past his teammate, Luciano, who does let us go. Because again, he's about a pit stop behind. And now the gap is 4.3 seconds to Rusty. So we have actually started to close in again. And the gap is 1.9 seconds to Ryu K. But you can see, as the laps go on, the time keeps on going down and down even more. And we're going to stay aboard on this lap because this is a lap where I really wanted to try and get within his DRS zone as much as possible. And you can see with the ERS, it's really hard to recover the battery. So you have to be so efficient in the way you use it. Because if you're too aggressive with it, then it doesn't matter how much pace you have. You're going to be suffering quite a lot on the straights if it keeps falling under the 10%. But... Again, like with the previous incident, I know when people are live streaming, sometimes their reactions can come off quite harsh, but I would encourage you to remember that these are live moments and there's no filter here. And with me, I definitely can control my emotions a lot better, but I always wear my heart on my sleeve and that's probably something that's not going to change. It's good to try and use your emotions in the best way possible, but sometimes when you feel something's done quite unfairly to you it's quite hard to uh, contain that and when you've had that quite a lot of times recently you know it doesn't matter how tough you are there is a limit um, to how much patience you do have as well but we're coming up to uh, Rai UK here and we have got within his DRS zone he managed to save quite a lot of the ERS as well it looks like he's weaving a bit on the straight so I wasn't really too interested in overtaking him on this lap um, so much here we're going into tell one so he's going quite defensive going into this but on the exit we get a pretty nice exit so we are quite close here and his red light was flashing so with five laps to go could maybe do something in this race so coming off the exit here goes quite defensive once again and we're gonna go to the right hand side we're gonna take the race on so come to be quite far ahead of him coming into the apex and Yeah. You've taken some slight damage. I can't be asked with this fucking league. There's fucking dickheads in there, man. Damage to the rear wing. You have damage to your rear wing. No I need can't to be worry about tire condition me. for now. Everything's looking good. What is the fucking point? And yeah, we're going to take a look at this again. Similar to the previous incident. So coming into start one, he goes quite defensive here. So clearly doesn't want to give up the position, which is absolutely fine. And we are on the same race as well, so there's no problem with this at all. Uh, come off the exit of this corner. 
we get a fairly good exit so we're pretty close coming here and there's two options i can either let him have this or i'm going to take the position and use that momentum to catch the others and with four laps to go or five laps to go i decided to go for the overtake here and at this stage if we go into slow motion if you look at the point of contact so we're quite far ahead coming into here coming into here we do leave a bit of room on this inside as well and the contact happens before we even get into the corner so again please let me know your thoughts on this because i've said it many times when you're reviewing your own instant you do tend to be a bit more on the buyer side but this is actually what it looked like from his perspective so as we're going to here now Yeah, it's... So we're going to go into a bit of slow motion here. So coming to here. I will leave that up to you on what you think of that. In my complete opinion, as we are... Before we do that, as we are about to come into the pits here now, and... Can't be asked for sleep, man. Yeah, rear wing damage can't be repaired at all. Turned in on it. And yeah, you're about to hear some frustrations. Oh, the car ahead. Room on the and as I said before, when you're live streaming, when I'm not live streaming, it's really easy to be cool, game. calm, and collected. Uh, but in the moment, People when you've put so a lot of time into this, and I put quite a lot of time into this race as well, and you have a lot of passion for it, it sometimes is quite hard to contain the emotions. And yeah, it's always enjoyable seeing someone suffer or get out of their comfort zone or something like that because admittedly myself it's entertaining when you see people uh, struggle in sports and that stuff like that as well but when you're in that seat it's yeah it's hard uh, at times and yeah you can see here i turned in i don't give a fuck what people say to be honest yeah and that is just me just completely uh, having enough I don't know what's at the this point, point and poking his nose in there. What do you expect me to do? Yeah, corner, to be honest, this, side by side? watching this back actually sanders me a bit because now I could probably say quite confidently that there's been for my, my 10 years of league racing or more there's honestly been probably less than 10 races that I have actually quit the race and hand on heart that is the truth um, itself and it takes a lot for me to do that and you know at this stage here i was just completely fed up uh, i felt i had the pace i'm not a perfect driver by any means whatsoever i feel you know there's been many times where i've turned in on someone where i haven't judged the space well or i've been a bit too aggressive but over the recent years if i've seen i've made a mistake i've always held my hands up and you know, apologized to the driver or said that i maybe have overreacted or something as well but in this one here, the first incident, I think, was just a very, very unfair driving uh, by Yannick there. Um, but with Ryu K, I don't think it's completely his fault looking at it. I feel... <laughs> I still feel it is majority of his fault. I felt like it's just not a corner where you want to try and go side by side. And if you're not fully alongside, if you're fully alongside, fair enough. If you're half away alongside, but if your front wheel was along someone's rear wing or rear wheel, then that isn't sufficiently alongside and you're not going ahead into the corner i think it's a corner for myself that you don't want to go deep on because you have a barrier on the exit so you do have to not leave no not use all of the track going through there as well so i felt that was potentially just enough room on that inside it was very tight but i just didn't i just don't see what there was to gain um, from him because i just would have had the inside for the next corner and with the tire wear difference and the ers difference as well if I was in his position, I probably would have sorted in behind and you no, know, would have been able to save the ERS and then could have maybe even overtaken me with two laps to go or last lap would have given himself a much, much better opportunity. But yeah, I will leave that up to you because as I said, when drivers are reviewing their own instance, it's quite easy to be biased, but I am trying to be as open-minded as I can. And this is me just being as honest as I, I can as well. Oh. I am being completely honest so yeah at the end of the day yeah, I could have continued that race we still got points if you look at the results here funny enough we still got points because a safety car came out but 
when I do races like this, I want to try and win the race and you know, to get a podium. And when I've got irreversible rear wing damage, I, I just had enough at this point. And I said it before, and I'm quite happy to say that when you're live streaming, when I watch other people live streaming, it's sometimes enjoyable um, to see them lose their cool and their emotions. But yeah, when you're the person who's invested the time in and... No, you try to do everything you can to get a good result and make it entertaining and stuff as well. Sometimes it does catch up to you a bit. So, yeah, that's all I will say on it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that as well. And I will be catching you very, very soon. Peace.